So, while I was gone, thank you, DQ, for some of the Aliens movie facts. Those are always fun to learn. And uh, for any of you just joining, or if you're watching this on YouTube in the future, hello from the future, or from the past, to future you. Hopefully you can find us on Twitch sometime. I hope I'm still around broadcasting. Um, I, I'd very much like to be. I'm glad you found us and uh, and come along for the ride as we're going to get into our second part of exploring character building in Alien RPG with a review of uh, the careers uh, in some RPGs like the classes. Uh, it's the how you how you do something in the game. And uh, and as as was talked about with the nuke them from orbit uh, chat, that's that's how we move into battle tech. Because uh, you do that enough and things get pretty bad for everyone. And then, and then, well, and of course I want Battletech. All right, well, we're going to have to go through some pretty Dark Age stuff then, Bane. But we'll get there. <laughs> I think we're close to fusion. I thought I read a news article where there was some sort of like a fusion ignition, at least. It wasn't a reactor, but we had some sort of a fusion ignition uh, that went off recently. Starship Troopers, the best one movie series ever. All right, so if you all have questions along the way, you are welcome to ask. 130, got a ton of things to do. Hey, uh, Ked, thank you very much. I hope you can hang out again. Uh, we're going to make some characters uh, the next two nights, so we'll practice what I'm preaching now. And then uh, in our third week, we're going to take the characters we make this week, and I'm going to be teaching how to make a, a spooky, scary game around those characters. So it's all going to weave together. Ked and everyone else, if for as much as you've uh, raided in, you've found us, you've joined us, you saw me spam my solicitations across uh, various discords uh, that we might share. Thank you for joining us. And uh, be well and take care. <laughs> All right, so let's begin. We have the Colonial Marine. Uh, for many of you out there, uh, it, it's odd because in the in the movie franchise, one and two, as we talked about in the last segment, one and two are two different takes on the same concept, and a lot of people really like the action and hold two as a, a good sequel. Some might say is better than the original, which is a rare case where the sequel is better. Um, and this, this would be, right, the Colonial Marine is, uh, is the, the go-to from that. Most of your friends will never see another world, but not you. As soon as you were old enough, you signed up for the US CMC. The pay is crap and the food is worse, but you've always got a bunk to sleep in and you'll get to shoot all sorts of weapons at all sorts of things. Life in the core is never dull. But the luster has begun to fade. You've seen things that you'll never be able to forget, and plenty you wish you could. <sighs> key attribute, strength. Now, why is that the key? Do you have to use it for everything? No. But if you recall from character creation, that's the thing that you can bump up a little. So here's our key attribute, which is strength. Key skills. Close combat. Stamina and ranged combat. Three different career talents. Banter, overkill, and past the limit. Remember that your career talents are things that are... They'll give you a bit of an edge. In fantasy games, those are something like feats. It, it will separate you from other marines. Now, does your key attribute have to be maxed out? No, of course not. Especially because ranged combat, it, it, you might specialize in ranged combat, 
That is not a strength-based skill. Let's pop over to our character sheet. Ranged combat is agility. And it's perfectly fine. If if you are more of a, a sniper or you just want to pew pew more than uh, than other things, then you there you go. You can build your marine in that direction. And in fact, if strength is uh, is the minimum of two, remember it's between uh, the, the two and five, right? Uh, well, two and four, but five can be your your uh, max. Um, well, build your marine that way. There's no right or wrong way to do it. And you can find plenty of difference in how you are not only putting the numbers in for your character, but especially how you weave and negotiate those numbers as you go about describing who you are and what you do. There are some names if you can't think of any. Do you have to use these? Not at all. But if you need something quick and easy, there you go. Your personal agenda. Do you have to use these for your personal agenda? No. But are these good reference? Yeah, of course. So let, let's explore. Your personal agenda. Choose from the options below or decide for yourself. You are a decorated hero. You need to defend your reputation at all costs. You once helped cover up a war crime no one must ever know. The death of your buddy has spooked you. Now you secretly fear combat and confrontation. You need to overcome your fear. Or Bane from Kindergarten Cop, who's your daddy and what does he do? Awkward Mancer says Alien 1 and 2 are as different as Solid Snake and Counter Strike. Uh, might as well compare Princess Bride and The Matrix. Can I help you, ma'am? Hello? Hi. Are you going to invade the camera? What are you doing? Uh, well, we, we might have the, the ship's cat join us uh, here shortly. She is prowling the desk on the other side of the monitor. In D and D terms, because hey, you know we most of us have met through D and D instruction and workshops. This would be something uh, that that would be in your background. You know how you have your ideal bond and flaw. You have your personality traits too. Uh, your agenda could very well be a weakness, and please, it is absolutely fine to have a weakness, a personality weakness, or something like oh, everyone's counting on me, but. You know, my personal agenda says I have to I have to make sure no one finds out about this. Well, you know, if someone's about to find out, maybe you got to gun buck them to the back of the head and knock them out, even when uh, everyone's counting on that person to succeed. Getting into this game, do you have to do that? No, and you could play without it, though it will create some very good role playing opportunities and a sense of drama and a heightened thrill because not all of the enemies are xenomorphs coming to get you. It's the question about the ulterior motives that the people that you're sharing very limited air and other resources with. Are you all oh, actually? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I tell not something, something, alien queen. Bane, thank you very much, and oh, yes to you. You know, can you trust everyone on your crew? Can you trust your scientist to tell you the entire truth? Can you trust your scientist to not smuggle out the sample that you've been trying to escape? So have fun with it and lean into it. Again, for many of you, if all of you, um, if, if all of you have just uh, been playing D&D, &D, for example, or a Pathfinder or something close to that, where it's the the sky's the limit, un, unlimited adventure. You know, the the horizon has a dawning sun, and uh, is you know silver clouds and everything. This is gonna feel a little different. This is gonna feel wow. Like I actually have to bake in uh, some controversy. I have to bake in a personal agenda that might actually go against the party. Yes, and have fun with it. Play with that and challenge yourself. 
No, plus 10 broadsword. I can't. <laughs> Never trust the scientists, says Awkward Mancer. Yep, and I need, I'm going to be getting you, Valandar, and the others your, your secret clues also, by the way. Again, Awkward, I, I know you understood, but um, I, I'm, I still am very low energy, so... Uh, it Yeah, it wasn't going to happen this week, especially not with how I was feeling. Uh, so, signature item. Choose one of the following or come up with one for yourself. A bullet that you survived. A, f a lost friend's dog tags. Or a trophy from a defeated enemy. The signature item has a mechanical benefit as a way to reduce stress. Beyond that, it gives you something for your character to talk about. Something to be remembered by in case of a tragedy, or a way to, you know, to introduce a feeling of remorse that you had to act on your personal agenda. Use it for the mechanics, yes, though also use it as a way to develop your character further. Your appearance? Again, here's some suggestions. A lot of soldiers might look this way. Do you? You don't have to. Now, could you also run a colonial marine as a trained soldier from, uh, oh, what was the... There's several different factions. Uh, the uh, United Progressive Peoples? I think it's the UPP. Of course. The UPP might have people who are very close to this in their soldiery. Remember, these, these are just a quick snap to idea that you should, uh, you know, you go to it and you build and customize it from there. You add the nuance. Now, gear, choose two of the starting items below. You get uh, D6 times 100 in cash. And so uh, it's, it'll provide you a list and you can use that on your gear. And then you can probably buy more stuff with the cash that you have. <laughs> a colonial marshal. The frontier can be a lawless place. The colonial marines are spread thin. They have neither the time nor the inclination to mete out local justice. Not to worry, there's a new sheriff in town, and that's you. Most law enforcement officers on the frontier are firmly planted deep in the back pocket of one company or another, but not you. You don't take bribes, and you never look the other way. You've made a lot of enemies on both sides of the law, but your colony has the lowest crime rate in the system. It's only a matter of time before you piss off the wrong CEO and corporate sends someone to take care of you, but that's okay. You'll be ready. A good blurb that can get you in the, in the attitude, in the mood. Can you play this as more of a, a as a corporate agent? Of course. You don't just have to be the sheriff of a far-flung colony or uh, the the head of security, you know, like Odo for Deep Space Nine, uh, the head of security at a space station. Your key attribute, wits. Your key skills, observation, ranged combat, and manipulation. Career talents, authority, investigator, and subdue. And we have, we have the the same you know spread of possible agendas. Um, your longtime partner betrayed you and defected to a crime syndicate. Get even, because look in Alien RPG, it is called Alien RPG. You could very well be fighting a lot of other humans before you ever, if ever, see a xenomorph. Because humans can be very terrible. I, I know this is probably breaking news to a lot of you, and I'm sorry if it shatters your heart. Humans can be pretty terrible to each other. So take a look through the suggestions, and of course, uh, oh, more, more uh, Garibaldi. Ah, I see, I see. Um, in, in, if you play other uh, games, you're like, oh, but like fighter tells me all this cool stuff and wizards gives me spell slots. Oh, isn't it amazing? Most of this is really just to try and develop your character's personality and expression right here. 
These are the mechanics for your character in this little box. Again, don't let the rules uh, get in the way of your character. Lean into them and have fun, build a character, but don't rely on the numbers to tell you who you are. A company agent. You're hungry, space is full of opportunity, and you've been assigned to the frontier to find the next big thing. From insider information to new mineral deposits, or even a hitherto unknown life form to exploit, it's up to you to score a win for the company and use it to catapult yourself up the corporate ladder. You tend not to form long-lasting attachments, instead viewing everybody as a commodity to capitalize on. Worry about others later. Right now, it's all about the bottom line. Your key attribute is wits. Skills are comtech, observation, and manipulation. Career talents, cunning. Personal safety. And take control. You look forward to leaving spell slots behind plus 10. Do you just like doing a point pool where it's just a, it's a big pool of potential? <laughs> now this, this is interesting. What a kid. Kid is a, is a, uh, a career or like a class. Yeah. And uh, the, the talents. Uh, the talents can be very useful in this game. <laughs> uh, kid, you didn't ask for a frontier life. Your parents brought you into this world kicking and screaming. Grown-ups always ask you what you want to be when you grow up, but all you want to do is be a kid. You used to fantasize about being an adult, able to stay up late and eat junk food whenever you want. Thing is, most of the frontier adults you know are always miserable and tired. There isn't much to do where you live, so you make your own fun. There's time to grow up later. For now, playing hide-and-seek in the ventilation system is the way to go. Yeah, Newt for the win. Uh, agility is your key attribute with your skills being mobility, survival, and observation. Your career talents are beneath notice, dodge, and nimble. And for you're like, oh, dodge, I, you know, something like that, or... Uh, you know, I, I get it. So you're kind of like a rogue in D&D. Well, th th it's kind of super powered. You can do some in like if you're familiar with the Newt character, this is going to be a reflection. <laughs> and by the way, in a game of Alien RPG, what are some things you could do with a starting gear, such as fishing line or a laser pointer? What about a magnet or a radio controlled car? What about a yo-yo or an electronic handheld game? A personal locator beacon or coloring pens? Hmm. How would, you, how would you have to be crafty? How would you have to think outside the box? Now, can you fire a gun? Maybe. You know, firearms training, you, uh, you can you can uh, teach a kid how to shoot a gun, how to have proper gun safety. So could you be a, a, a pew pew shoot em up uh, boy or girl? Absolutely. But with the starting gear and such, you might have to find a way to make do. Medic. There are a million and one ways to die in space. Also, I think in the West. From exposure to vacuum or unknown contagions to vicious organisms or getting accidentally shot by a drunken roughneck. In all these scenarios, you're the one carrying the bandages and adrenaline shots. When someone suffers trauma, it's the first few minutes that matter most. If someone survives long enough to make it to a metapod, you've done your job. You used to be altruistic about frontier medicine, but you've seen enough to become jaded. Too many people in the Outer Veil are addicted to painkillers, 
and most colonies are not up to health and safety regulations. That means more people get hurt. Your work is never done. So you could play a doctor or a nurse. You could also play an OSHA inspector or whatever the space, you know, space OSHA uh, would be. Your key attribute is empathy with your skills being mobility, observation, and medical aid. Your career talents are calming presence, compassion, and field surgeon. <laughs> Officer. When everything is going to poo, the company is holding your crew's pay hostage. There's a mountain of reports to file from the last incident near Thetis. And who knows how many family members back home are weighing on everyone's minds. It's a good thing you spent all those years training to do this for a living. You're the authority figure, the role model, the voice of your superiors, and the enlisted crew's advocate. You're also the butt of all their jokes around the mess hall, until it all gets so much worse, and they're looking to you for what to do next. Better hope your training has a solution to this one. Your key attribute is empathy. Key skills ranged combat, command, and manipulation. Career talents, field commander, influence, and pull rank. A signature item being a ship's cat? Hmm. Ma'am. Would you count as a signature item for me? You would? Well, that's very nice of you. Thank you. Yeah, blah blah to you too. He's perched up there like a gargoyle. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I'm talking to me. Hey, wag your tail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In in the same uh, universe with Wayland Utani. Yep. A pilot. The stars are the limit, and they are limitless. You aren't content to keep your feet on the ground. And on the frontier, there's no need to. From starfighters to drop ships, freighters to frigates, there's always something that needs flying and some aerospace stunt that only you can pull off. You aren't in this for the money, although it doesn't hurt. You're a thrill seeker and an adrenaline junkie. Danger is the rush you live for, but stay frosty. Otherwise, the next time you find yourself dodging through an asteroid belt or seeing the ground rush up to meet you might be your last. Hey, all right, enjoy watching Titan A.E., Jurassic. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> now, pilot, it mentioned a lot. You know, could you be a corporate, like a, a luxury, like a space limo pilot? Sure. Can you actually be in the Colonial Marines? Absolutely. Be a dropship pilot. Can you be, I forget, I forget the character's name. Uh, who is the, the crazy crop duster from Independence Day who always claimed that aliens uh, abducted him? You know, could you be a farmer on the frontier who knows how to pilot a ship? But man, if you don't go yeehaw when you do it, because you're a, you're a country bumpkin who just knows how to work the technology because it's so standardized by now. Absolutely. Again, don't let pilot itself dictate what a pilot is. The blurb here, I'm, I'm looking at it. You see, I'm looking at it. The blurb here gives you some ideas, but have fun with it. You make it, it, it slaps down a lump of clay. You make it into what you want. <laughs> Australia says, Cat, you can use me as a signature item. However, you only lose stress when you feed me. Every other interaction results in you gaining stress. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the, the pilot uh, from the in Independence Day movie who was the crop duster like he he did like a he could fly like a stunt like biplane or something like that or or he would just always like swoop low and like he just he lived out in the on, on the farms and he was doing all that stuff everyone thought he was crazy no one believed him but he could pilot a, a he could pilot a plane <laughs> you know you, you gunning it going I'm back I think that was it right 
a dashboard dancer. You got a little like a, a little hula, a little hula shaker. <laughs> a roughneck. Someone has to do the manual labor on the frontier, and that someone is you. Life has dealt you some harsh blows, but you've always struck back. You've been in countless barroom brawls, you swear a lot, and belch at the dinner table. In short, people find you uncouth. You really don't care. You've grown past the need for niceties. No one works harder than you. You are up before first dawn and finish your workday long after second twilight. You are the cog that keeps the frontier chugging. Your hands are calloused and your face is dirty, and the only thing harder than the work you do is the way you party. He attributes strength, he skills, heavy machinery, stamina, close combat, career talents, resilient, the long haul, and true grit. Yeah, streaking, yeah. <laughs> The scientist. Man, I, I hope no one's playing a scientist out there. Every day, new pieces of the puzzle, uh, or new pieces to the puzzle of existence are found on the frontier. Figuring out what makes them fit together could leap humanity over nature's next hurdle, and you are one thesis away from the respect you deserve. Some find you cold and detached. They don't understand what your passion, uh, that your passion is knowledge. Whether your field is xenobiology, astrophysics, robotics, or even archaeology, there are countless treasures in space just waiting for someone to trip over uh, the next asteroid and run right into them. Whether or not that's you, you're still the one who understands them better than anyone. Key attribute, wits. Key skills, observation, survival, and comtech. Career talents, analysis, breakthrough, and inquisitive. Yeah, who would ever? Never trust the scientist. Scheming, concocting. <laughs> so those were those were the careers. Now I'm not going to get into the depth with the skills. We did a little bit of, of that on uh, when we we're discussing rolling the dice, and if you get successes, then uh, you need you need a success on one of the die in your uh, one of the dice in your one of the die in your dice pool in order to achieve a basic uh, success. More, you get to do something called a stunt. And so uh, stunts, I mean, we're talking about making a movie, right? We're talking about doing something incredible. That would be like a critical success, right? So each of the 12 skills have some suggested stunts uh, associated. Now, if we go to piloting, so let's say one of you wants to play that Yeehaw Frontier Crop Duster who just so happened to crawl into the cockpit of a Colonial Space Marine, uh, you know, uh, bombardier ship uh, because the pilot is no longer with us. What are some things that you could do once you learn how to fire up this uh, uh, this thing? So be it a dropship, a star freighter, or a battle frigate, you're the you're the one to fly it. Roll for piloting when you attempt any difficult and dangerous maneuver at the helm of any type of spacecraft. The skill can also be used to drive ground vehicles. Failure, you're coming in too hot and you crash and burn. By the way, this is why only roll if it really matters, because it's not a win or nothing happens. It's a it's a save or suck. It's a you do it or you fail doing it. Success, you pull off the maneuver. Stunts. For every extra success you roll, choose one stunt applicable to the situation. Gain a plus one modifier to a later skill relating to this one, or you show off. Now, could there be more? Sure. Could your GM say, no, I'm not going to let you show off here? Of course. Negotiate, have fun. There's only two stunts associated with piloting. But just like Wikipedia, you can help expand that list. <laughs> Whereas if you go to stunts for close combat, look at stunts for ranged combat. What about stunts for comtech? Plus one modification, you don't need a roll to overcome the exact challenge in the future. 
You do it quickly in half the time. You get new or unexpected information. You hide your tracks or you show off. So lean into it, narrate, have fun. Expl this is all about exploring the unknown, which even includes using the basic rules in the book as a jumping off point into other things that you suggest. Pardon. Now, the talents. <laughs> I'm parallel parking. Roll. No successes. Everyone dies. That's the spirit, Awkward Mancer. That's what we're going for in Alien RPG. By the way, that why don't you put her in charge? Uh, that someone brought up earlier with uh, the the kid. There, there you go. Oops, sorry everyone. Let's reset this. To survive and thrive in the cold dark of space, you need to find your own niche, something you and no one else can do. Such special abilities are called talents. Talents can affect how you use skills or how you recover from damage or stress, or even let you do things that are quite simply impossible for others. As opposed to skills, talents are not rated. You either have them or you don't. There are two distinct types of talents, career talents and general talents. Career talents can only be learned by characters with a specific career. General talents can be learned by anyone. When you create a character for campaign play, you get to choose one career talent. You can learn new talents during play. So, they are listed here. Um, we might have a little bit of time. To, yeah, could we? Yeah, you know what? We can go through these. It's not a, it's not a very broad pool, and hopefully we can get some discussion on, oh, I see, you can make an entire squad of Colonial Marines and have them be different in, uh, in different ways here. So let's go through it. Colonial Marine Talents. Banter. Between fights, you release the tension in your team with some friendly banter. Your stress level and the stress level of everyone in short range of you drops two steps instead of one for every turn spent in a safe place. Having several Marines with this talent doesn't increase the effect. Overkill. You don't run and hide when the going gets tough. Instead of panicking in the face of mortal danger, you can turn your fear into aggression and use it as a weapon against your enemy. You can trigger the overkill effect when you make a panic roll, and that's described later on. Past the limit. When the going gets tough, the tough get going, and you're the toughest badass around. You can push any skill roll based on strength twice, not just once like other characters. Each push increases your stress level by one. So right there, this is giving you something others can't do. Now, can you have two Marines with banter? Yes, mechanically, if they're both together, you get the effects of one. But that means that you can split the party and still reduce stress. And by the way, reducing stress in this game. You know what? We we're talking about battle tech. How do you get battle tech? You adopt a policy of nuking your enemies from orbit, and that's it. No negotiations, you just send down the nukes and the bioweapons. And you you know, that that's not gonna be good for long-term health. Well, just like in battle tech, how you have to manage the heat of your battle mech, this game will require the management of stress. And so, yes, it would be important to be past the limit and to, you know, oh, grab my hand, do it now! And you, you, you haul someone up out of the explosion. Past the limit is awesome in that regard. Overkill. That is the Rambo. You got your gun in the jungle and you're shooting everyone because that's the only thing that makes sense. You can't be panicked if you're too busy, you know, distributing death. That's important, but you can only have one. And banter? 
the ability to blow off that steam, the ability to try and get people to calm down and stop freaking out is also super important. All three of these are good, and I, I hope you're going to see that these talents, in the context of the game, are going to be character customizing choices and also an essential part of the game and not just a ribbon to tag onto your character. I'm convinced Wayland Yutani was inspired by the Ford Motor Company, how they handled the Pinto debacle of the 70s and 80s. I, Australis, you know, uh, I I will not deny that because look at look at when this franchise was born. Look at the broader, uh, you know, the the broader uh, out of out of lore context of society. I mean, we have uh, while there is, you know, while while there is the third faction of the the Three Kingdom Empire that still plays into the the seventies going into the eighties. Uh, oh, hi. Good day, good day. Sydney of Hightower, it is a pleasure to have you and the others from Nat 20 Productions official back in the Hero Zone. Thank you for sending your reinforcements. Let's give you a shout out, everyone. Nat 20 Productions official. We are talking about character creation in Alien RPG. <laughs> no one expects the Lunar Inquisition. Hello, Nat20. Hello, Terran Wanderer. Excellent to see you again. Pengu-chan. Oh, I know that music. Where is it from? It's going to bug me. Uh, this is from Starforged. <laughs> Other Doc. First time chatter. Hello, rating. And of course, Sydney of Hightower is here as well. So hello, welcome everyone to this friendly local game store taken online through Twitch. Uh, oh, back to Diablo 4. Well, Pengu, thank you for coming along in the raid. Uh, happy clicking and loot gathering to you, and I hope that you are enjoying it. Awkward Mancer, you play Final Fantasy XIV? I didn't know that. Or did I? And I forgot. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you like it, Pengu. Uh, so for those of you joining, we're teaching Alien RPG. We're going through character creation currently. And if any of you have questions, you're welcome to ask. Or if you're like, I don't know, what, what is this channel? He said it's an FLGS taken online. It is. How? Well, I'll tell you. But you got to ask first, because I don't know what you do or don't know. Oh, you're playing D4 as well. Awkward, Mancer. You're playing it right now. From inside the house. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> Pengu-chan goes to lurk. Are you sure that's what you want to do, Pengu-chan? And for me, it's back to... Checks notes. Work? No, thank you. I think I'll stay here. Ah, that's the question, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spoil anything, Taryn. Now let's say you play a colonial marshal. One of one of your uh talents is authority. By invoking your authority as a colonial marshal, you can use your command skill instead of manipulation to get someone to bend your will. Now, they're both with an empathy, but it allows you to double up. So perhaps you want to put more points elsewhere. You know, why would you take that? Because, well, number one, there's a lot of role play you can lean into from that, if that is the premise of your talent. And two, that would mechanically free up points that you could put elsewhere in your character. Investigator. You see what others miss and are skilled at noticing small details and making sense of them. When you spend a turn in a room or similar location, you can roll for observation. Only one attempt is allowed. For each success, that is a six on a base die. Pardon me. For each success you roll, you may ask the GM one of the following questions. 
The GM must answer truthfully, but she is allowed to give vague or incomplete information. What happened here? There was a firefight. Is there anything hidden here? And if so, where? And are there any details here that are out of place, something that's out of the ordinary? Maybe is that a little bit more like Odo from Deep Space Nine? You can also subdue. You're skilled at subduing an opponent without harming them. When you attack a humanoid opponent in close combat, you can declare that you are trying to subdue them. You then get a plus two modification to the attack, but if it hits, you don't inflict any damage. Instead, you hold your opponent in a grapple. Extra successes have no effect. Oh, and you know what? I'm sorry. Before the raid, we're talking about themes that were going in and how like Wayland yutani is based on Ford with the whole Pinto controversy. What was happening around the time of the 70s going into the 80s? There was a great fear that Japan was moving into the U.S. and taking over businesses and buying up land and a lot of other things. Wayland yutani There was also that, that controversy of it's cheaper to pay... It's, it's cheaper to pay the death claims on people who died in the fuel tank explosions than it is to recall the cars that had the flaw. And while there was a great economic boom that came out of the 80s, there was also a corporate culture that wasn't keeping up or that was, you know, <laughs> that. We also had a lot of Cold War fear, which is how you, you can get a Cold War style sentiment that's also why we get this retro tech of, you know, like, oh, you know, like, you know, fly to the navigator. Oh, we went to the NASA base and space shuttles. And man, look at, you know, look at the computers. They're like monochromatic green, like our background right now. Whoa, that's cool. You know, the computers like chip and chirp and then take up an entire room. Think of the processing power that computer must have. Meanwhile, you know, what, what was it like a, a Game Boy? A Game Boy had more computing power than the first space shuttle? Was it something like that? Anyway, you get where I'm going. So th that's why there's these interesting baked-in aesthetics. That's why everything feels kind of greasy and dirty. Almost like a, a diesel tech, a diesel punk in space kind of a feel with, uh, with Alien RPG. You know, as a product of that time and of, of you know, greater cultural conflicts that were distilled through the lens of uh, horror storytelling and sci-fi storytelling, the great fascination with uh, with space at the time, because we were we're more and more consistently breaching uh, the atmosphere to do more and more in space, um, and of course we have uh, just the the glut of horror movies that came out at that point in time, and the quality of special effects, and even the introduction of digital effects that we're starting to go into movies. All of this is stuff you can absolutely lean into and, and enjoy. <laughs> uh, less than your average 1986 calculator, asks Taryn. In United Progressive People's Republic, the stress dice rolls you. It, it, yeah, play into the jokes and memes also, right? Of, uh... <laughs> Which, if I recall, in, in our modern times, and I, I'm not going to drag, uh, you know, modernity and everything, and I'm not going to drag real life in here, but um, not that there wasn't, you know, suspicion or conflict, but maybe it wasn't as heated because there was a more direct, uh, hey, that's the enemy to point to. Uh, but there was a push. I, I believe for a while, Walmart tried to have a, an only or mostly made in America phase. And it didn't last too long because a lot of people really wanted U.S. made stuff. But that policy didn't work for Walmart uh, because while they were trying to support U.S. companies and buy from U.S. only and U.S. manufactured and all that, uh, either the quality wasn't there yet uh, and or the breadth of product wasn't there to support 
the demand. Also, that was the time, and maybe maybe that stereotype still exists, uh, but there was also uh, a lot of concept where uh, foreign cars, and in particular Japanese cars, were considered more technological, more fuel efficient, and they were a threat to U.S. automakers who made just land boats, huge cars. I mean, because at the time still, too, gasoline was you know cheaper than water. Uh, I'm not necessarily, but uh, it was so ubiquitous, and there was no real need to conserve uh, to conserve gasoline or to necessarily push a technological envelope like you'd get out of Japan with limited more space or a different cultural requirements or just a need for better technology to better handle the limited resources they had. And and so th there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that is baked in. But you can have fun with, because ultimately, in Alien RPG, the vying factions get along or don't however you want, because this is a made-up world. You know, if you want a, a space Cold War, then have a space Cold War. And a space, uh, you know, a space all this other stuff. <laughs> Alright, Rip Artist, be well. Uh, if you're feeling better and you have a chance, Rip Artist, let me know about those minis, okay? <laughs> Cheaper than water is now, Goblin says. Uh, that policy died with the owner and founder of the Walmart company, I believe, says Taryn. So, hey, you know what? Do you know how many of us have ever played Dungeons and Dragons and look up all kinds of stuff of like, you know, how much leather can I actually get off of a, off of a cow? Or I don't know, what what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? How much research into stuff have we done through other games? You can do a lot of fun personal digging as well if you look into, you know, when, why, or how is, you know, was this setting extracted out of whatever time it was? Thank you, Infinity. That is that. So that is the answer, <laughs> though it is another question. Company talent agents. You can be. No. Oh. oh, all right, rep artist. Cool. Please. Cunning. If the company has taught you anything, it's to always be on the lookout for anything that can give you an edge. You can push any skill roll based on wits twice. So kind of like what the Colonial Marines has, but that is based off of wits. Personal safety. The interests of the company always come first no matter what, and you represent the company. That means your own safety is paramount. Other crew members are expendable. If you are attacked or otherwise end up in fatal danger, and if another PC or friendly NPC is within short range in the same zone, you can make a manipulation roll a straight roll not opposed and does not count as an action. If you succeed, you see the threat coming and find a clever way to make the other character suffer the attack or hazard instead of you. Uh, using this talent increases your stress level by one. So you can play a weasel and have fun doing it, either against your friends or uh, you could throw a bunch of hapless NPCs uh, in front of you. Take control. You know how to make people do what you want, and you don't feel bad about doing it. You can roll for manipulation using wits instead of empathy. There you go. <laughs> yep, a company man, IMW. Kid talents. Now, if you recall, I said kids have some amazing talents in this game, and they're needed. If your starting equipment is a laser pointer and a yo-yo, and you have a, you know, and you have, uh, well, what can exist in Alien RPG coming after you, beneath notice, no matter what horrible situations you end up in, you always seem to make it out unscathed, probably because no one ever pays much attention to you. When you roll for a critical injury on yourself, you get to re-roll the dice and choose the result you prefer. Dodge. When attacked in close combat, you can dodge. This works like blocking. 
but you roll using mobility instead of close combat, and you can only use it to reduce damage, not counterattack or disarm. You can even dodge a creature's signature attack. <laughs> Nimble. Fun in games? Maybe to others, but you know the truth. All that play has kept your reflexes sharp. You can push any skill roll based on agility twice. So you are you survive. You get out, you mitigate, uh, you are just, you know, whoop, 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 whoop. Company agent, I throw the ship's cat at the approaching xenomorph. <laughs> well, that would count, exactly. He <laughs> just... <laughs> you scamper out of there. Played company man in Chariot of the Gods cinematic and was the only one who made it out alive. Uh, <laughs> uh, teases? Question mark, Urians? <laughs> Infinity says, I tape the laser pointer to the yo-yo and watch the cat go nuts as I throw the yo-yo. Uh, Demon Quiller says, had a kid character use a laser pointer to get a dog's attention, so the facehugger went after it instead of her. Yep. I mean... Yeah, just doing what you had to do. <laughs> it is my nature, says the scorpion, as it sinks. <laughs> I love it. Hey, keep up those stories, too. It, uh, you know... Again, if we're trying to if if we're trying to like take people who've mostly only played D and D and get them to look at other systems and try, have you ever tried playing a Weasley character like this? Who would put a dog in front of a face hugger? Who would hey go you know go hey you over here and get in the way of a xenomorph or something like that? If not, you should try it. Australis is calling judgment on uh, Demon Quiller. Uh, medic talents, calming presence. People find themselves relaxing whenever you are around. Once per turn, you may reduce the stress level of another character within short range by one, in addition to the normal stress recovery. In order to use this talent, you and any character that hopes to benefit from your calming presence must be in a relatively safe place. You cannot use this talent on yourself. Your your ship's counselor, in a sense. Compassion, but you can't use it on you because you know the truth. Compassion, this isn't a job for you. You truly care about the people under your care. You can push any skill roll based on empathy twice. Field surgeon, you know the delicate art of stopping a wound from bleeding or treating grave injuries you get a plus two modification to medical aid when treating someone who is about to die from a critical injury. <laughs> Officer. Field commander. You can use command to give orders in combat as a fast action instead of a slow action. This, in effect, means you can give orders twice in the same round. Influence. With rank comes certain privileges. Being obeyed is one of them. You can push any skill roll based on empathy twice. Pull rank. You uh, pull rank. You can use your command skill to order other non-officer PCs and NPCs around as long as they belong to the same organization as you. To force someone to follow your orders and perform a specific action, roll command against the target's manipulation. If successful, the target must follow your order, even if it means harm or danger to themselves. Your stress level increases by one each time you do this. Note that each roll only covers one specific action. You cannot stop actions triggered by panic rolls using this talent. Pilot talents. Full throttle. You like to go fast. Really fast. When piloting a spacecraft, you get a plus two modification to piloting for any accelerate or decelerate actions. Like the back of your hand, this vehicle is yours and you know every bolt and cable, nook and cranny. Choose one vehicle or spacecraft, not one type, but a single specific craft. You get a plus two modification to piloting with the chosen vehicle. You can choose this talent several times, once for each vehicle. Reckless. 
You live for the rush of adrenaline through your veins, pushing harder and, uh, than others dare. You can push any skill roll based on agility twice, not just once like other characters. Roughneck. Resilient. Only the hardiest folks survive out there. Roll strength. Attribute only, no skill, anytime you suffer damage. You can't push the roll, which does not count as an action. For every success, a six on a base die, you roll. One point of damage is eliminated. If all damage is eliminated, you suffer none at all. Ooh, nice tank. The long haul. You've seen it done... Uh, you've seen it and done it all before. Nothing surprises you anymore. Once per act in cinematic play and once per game session in campaign play, you may ignore all stress, one on a stress die, from a single roll. It, this is the tanky paladin right here. True grit. Life on the frontier is a constant struggle. Luckily, you have what it takes to overcome anything that comes your way. You can push any skill roll based on strength twice. <clears throat> Awkward says, In fealty to the god emperor, our undying lord, and by the grace of the golden throne, I declare exterminatus upon this sorry place. Urian says, Captain had his buddy Roughneck try to shoot me with his shotgun because he didn't like or trust me. <laughs> DQ says, I would say that's taking rivals too far. Most people don't haul off and kill a co-worker, but I have no issues using them as a human shield versus a xenomorph. <laughs> lines in the sand, lines in the sand. You know, what's a face hugger between friends? They're not dead yet. They, you, they still got some time, you know. Scientist. Analysis. You can roll for observation to gain insight regarding strange and alien artifacts or creatures that you encounter and get a chance to study for at least one turn. For every success you roll, you get to ask the GM one of the questions below. Is it human or alien? Is it dead or alive? How old is it? What is its purpose? How does it work? What problems could it cause? The GM must answer truthfully, but is allowed to uh, to give vague or incomplete answers in order to avoid spoiling the scenario. A successful analyze roll also reduces the stress level of all other PCs within short range by one, while a failed roll increases other PCs' stress level by one. Right? You're relying on the scientist to tell you what's going on because knowledge banishes uh, fear. And if the scientist looks at you and says, I don't know, everyone starts going, oh. Breakthrough. You've done it. Once per game session, you automatically pass an observation roll of your choice without needing to make a roll. In order to avoid spoiling the scenario, the GM has final say on whether or not this talent can be used for a particular role. Because information management is a key part of, a, of telling a horror story, and this game is very much saying, look, we get that. <clears throat> Pardon. So do what you must to maintain the tension. Inquisitive. You are always seeking to expand the boundaries of your knowledge. You can push any skill roll based on wits twice. <laughs> now, we have a lot of general talents. And uh, so this is something anyone can learn. This could go to a scientist, a roughneck, uh, or a kid. Uh, so, you know, why would a kid have uh, uh, EVA specialist? You get a plus two to heavy machinery and contact rolls when spacewalking. Maybe the kid has had to go out and do that before. I don't know if any of you have been raised on a farm, but if you have or you know someone who's the, the son or daughter of a farmer, you go out and you drive that tractor. You you go out and you help, you know, you help fix something. You help, uh, you know, get the animals back. You help cover the crops when there's a storm coming in. Even if you're 13 or 14, you're out there, you know, doing that stuff that could be dangerous or a lot of other people who aren't in that situation may. <laughs> yeah. 
You start doing that as soon as you learn to walk. Hey, you can walk. Take the take the uh, the milk pail out to the the milking barn or the shed or whatever, right? You know, why would a scientist have killer as a general talent? You know where to strike to make your enemy fall and not get up, ever. When your enemy sustains a critical injury, you may switch the D66 roll so that uh, the ones die becomes the tens and vice versa. This talent can only be used on humans. Do any of you remember the, uh, the Sherlock Holmes uh, movie with uh, Robert Downey Jr.? when he was breaking down how to break down his boxing opponent. That's why a scientist could very well be a killer. <laughs> yep, Australis, in space, no one can hear the child labor law violations. Jack the Ripper was a scientist, says Infinity. <laughs> so I don't need to go over all of these. Because we've been at this for about an hour anyway. But you can see that this is a way that... It's a specialist, but it's a generalized specialty. Um, so you can very specifically be... Sorry, hang on. This keeps geeking out. So as the scientist, you may very well want to go for analysis. Because you're the type of player you want to know stuff. You want to get that info from your game mother your GM. However, because the way you've grown up or the way that you've uh, gotten your knowledge or the things that you've been exposed to along uh, along the, the lines, let's go back. Maybe because you can break things down in your mind um, or you have a clinical detachment uh, because of the way that you've studied things, you're merciless. You can perform a coupe de gracie a coup de gras without rolling empathy. Also, your stress level is decreased one step each time you cause an enemy to be broken. So these are ways to specialize and personalize your character. And they are all very, very handy. Because remember, if you're rolling dice in this game, there is something at stake. Dice rolls, uh, some of them can be lighter, but dice rolls should never be a, eh, you know what, roll and see. Because it, it's never a, you, you succeed at, or nothing happens. It's a, you succeed or you fail. You get to exist in a neutral state, but as soon as the dice come out and you build your dice pool, then there's something at stake. Something is on the line. And so to be able to manipulate those rolls, to be able to manipulate your dice pool is very important in this game, especially with the stress mechanic, because it's not terribly difficult for one person to panic, cause other people's stress to go up, and they panic, and it's a chain reaction. Soon everyone's dropped their weapons, has thrown open the doors, or is screaming when everyone else is trying to hide. <laughs> so this is very much a game of trying to keep your stuff together. And can you survive the mystery to live through another session? <laughs>